in this tutorial, we'll be discussing the fluting toolpath, which is one of the 2.5D toolpaths that you can find on VCarve and Aspire software. We'll be covering some basic examples of how to use this toolpath, like the example that you can see on screen, and we'll also look at some other examples of how you can use fluting as well to create some really interesting effects. But to do so, let's begin the tutorial by closing this file. So let's go to File and Close. And we're going to create a new file, so let's go to Create a New File. I want this to be 24 by 6 with a thickness of 0.25 and let's click OK. So to create the design that we just saw on screen a moment ago, we're going to go to the Draw Pipeline tool. And the first thing we want to do is enter an X value of 4, as in 4 in X, so it'll be around about uh, here, so we're just being really accurate with this one, with a height of 1.5 in Y. I'm going to click Add. Now that's added my first point to create my pipeline from. Now I'm going to change the X value here to uh, be 20, so again 4 in from the other side, click on Add, and that's created my line. Now I need three of these lines, so instead of creating this three times, I'm going to go to the uh, Array Copy tool with my vector selected, and I'm just going to create uh, three rows, uh, one column, and offset this uh, in Y by 1.5, so to put 0 there, click Copy, and we now have our three lines ready to look at toolpathing. Now speaking of toolpathing, to get over to the toolpath menu, we need to click in the top left here, and we'll switch over to our toolpath menu, and we'll have a quick look at that material setup before we look at any toolpaths. So the thickness is pulled from the thickness that we put in the job setup sheet. The XY datum is the bottom left here. The Z0 is off the material surface. We don't work with any models in this particular design, so we don't need to worry about this. And my clearance values and my plunge value as well as my Z-gap above material are particular for my machine. So these are safe and sound for my machine because I've tested these already. So do make sure that these are the right things for your particular machine by running some tests uh, beforehand. But I'm happy with that, so let's click OK. And now let's look at looking at the fluting toolpath. So let's highlight our vectors and we'll come over to the fluting toolpath, which is found just here in the toolpath menu. Now you notice we've got several options here. We've got a start depth, which we don't need in this case, but we have a flute depth, which is similar to a cut depth in this case, specific to the flute. Now I want this to be 0.25, uh, sorry, 0.2 in fact, on this one. Uh, the tool, I've gone for a quarter inch of ball nose, but if you click on select, you can see all the tools that we've got available here, but this is the one I want to use, and I've checked these settings beforehand to make sure they're safe and appropriate for my machine, but do double check these for yourself. So let's click select. Now we have the options for the flute type, so ramp over complete length, well, this, will, this will literally ramp it over the complete length to this flute depth, so it will start at zero and then eventually get to the point where the end is at 0.2 inches, so the depth will gradually increase as it goes along. For ramp at start, this will create a uh, ramp at the start and you can use these options here to define that ramp. So you notice here we have the ramp length, so you can define that the uh, ramp at the start is a specific length in inches in this case, because that's the units that we're working in or you can give it a, a percentage value. So in this case, if I use 25%, it will ramp for 25% of that line, then it would go to the full depth of the flute depth that we've got here. So 25% of that line will be cut uh, as that ramp, and then uh, it will go down to that full uh, flute depth there as well. And um, For ramp at the start and end, very similar to ramp at start, except this time it has it at the uh, uh, start and the end. So in this case, if I had a ramp of 25%, which is the value that I'm actually going to use here, it will ramp for 25% of the line, go down to that max uh, flute depth, and then for the end, it will go for the 25% at the end of the line. So you have the 50% in the middle, that will be the 0 0.2 uh, flute depth. In terms of ramp type, linear will be a sharp uh, linear ramp, so it will cut down at an angle. For smooth, this would cut a smooth uh, ramp into uh, our design and we can see this in action in just a moment because we're going to use the smooth option uh, for this one and with this I'm just going to click calculate and we can have a look at what this file looks like so this is our tool pass here you can see that it's doing a smooth move here to ramp in and then it flats out and then it will smoothly exit at the end here you can see how it exits there as well Let's put that back into view. Let's click on Preview Selected Toolpath and let's have a look at what it looks like. So you can see there that smooth transition into it because we had a smooth ramp, flat out the bottom there, and then smooth on the way out there.
So that's a quick and easy example of how to use a fleeting toolpath, but let's have a look at another file. So for now, what we're gonna do is close this file down and we'll have a look at another one. So I'll come up to file and close. Don't need to save changes in this one, for example, and we need to click on open an existing file. And in this case, we want the cutting board flute vectors file. So let's double click that to open it up. And we can now have a look at this example. So let's pop over to the 3D view and let's have a look at these vectors. So you can see here we've got some flutes in the middle or vectors in the middle for a fluted grooves down the center of the board, a fluted vector around the edge of the board, and then we've got a pocket at the top here uh, to complete our chopping board design. Now one item of note on this design is that this outline vector is actually two separate vectors. Now if you go to node editing mode by clicking on this button just here, uh, we can see that the start point is over here on this one. And you'll find that the same is true of the bottom vector. Now you'll see that the start point is also here and that's because we want the start point to be at this end uh, when the flute cuts because we want the cutting start at this end, not at this end for our chopping board. But with that, let's exit out of node editing mode. We can click escape on the keyboard and let's have a look at creating some toolpaths for this. So let's pop over to the toolpath menu and as usual, let's check our material setup. So in this case, we've got a 1.5 inch thick piece of material, which is perfectly fine for our shopping, uh, chopping board. XY datum on the bottom left, Z0 off the material surface, no model in this case, so we don't need to worry about this field. And again, the uh, clearance and plunge, as well as the Z gap on the material are safe and sound for my machine, but in this case, double check it for your machine by running some tests beforehand uh, to be safe. So let's click OK, and then let's have a look at the fluting toolpath uh, for our chopping board. So while we're in this form, we're going to select all the vectors apart from the pocket vector at the end there. So we're going to use all these vectors here. And right away, I can spot an issue is that the start points for the vectors are on the left apart from this one here. So let's uh, tile our views momentarily and we're just going to have a look at this, uh, changing this one. So if I just go into node editing mode with N on the keyboard, right mouse click on this node, click on make start point, And now that is made at the start point, And now all of our nodes should be facing the same way. So let's Maximize our 3D view again, select all our vectors again, and now if we go up to our start depth, we're actually going to enter a very, very, very small start depth of 0.05. And we're going to cut down to a, a depth of 0.25 inches. And this time I'm going to use a slightly bigger tool. I'm actually going to use a half inch ball nose. And these settings are safe and appropriate for my machine, but as usual, do check they are safe for yours. And then in this case, I'm actually going to ramp over the complete length. So it's going to ramp at the uh, start depth and then all the way down to the uh, flute depth that we've uh, specified in this form over here. And in this case, we want the ramp type to be linear. And we can just go ahead and call this one fluting, click calculate, and then we can have a look at our preview for our uh, fluting tool pass. And, and I'm going to change the material here. So I'm going to change this uh, for a actual material. So if I change this to uh, Canadian maple, for example, and then what we'll do is we'll click previous letter toolpath. And you'll see what's happening is that the shallow cut is at the left end over here, and then it gets towards the full flute depth that we set, which is 0.25 over here on the right hand side. And the same applies for the outer edge vector. You'll notice it's actually shallower on this side and it gets deeper as it goes around, which is why it was so important that we had the start points over here on the left hand side. Let's pop that back into the top down view and let's look at the next part of our toolpathing. And the next toolpath we're going to look at is actually the pocket toolpath. So let's close out our preview form and you can see that our vectors are available on the 3D view. And I've got my pocket one selected here. And what you'll notice is, is the vector that we have here for our pocket is slightly larger than the vector that we use for fluting. Now fluting always cuts on the line. So when we created our pocket, we have to take into account uh, that the damage to the tool that we're using for the fluting. So you can see that here, you can see the actual cut that we made for our flute here. And you can see where it meets the top and the bottom and the edge of this pocket toolpath. So we've already taken into account uh, the damage of the tool that we use for our fluting here because it's cutting on the line. And our pocket needs to reflect that because our pocket needs to be going around that fluting edge there. So with that covered, let's go into our pocket toolpath and let's look at creating a toolpath uh, for it. So first things first, let's set our cut depth, which will be 0.3. Now in this case, I've got an emerald selected and I do want to have actually two tools to cut this one because I actually want to use the same uh, ball nose that we use for our fluting toolpath, which is a half inch here. And I don't want it to cut the whole pocket with the half inch ball nose. So what I wanted to do is use the end mill first to effectively clear a lot of that area first, and the ball nose will clear it up. 
I am going to edit the settings for my end mill just a little bit though, so that the pass depth is 0.3 because my material is quite soft. So I wanted to cut that all in one pass. Uh, and these settings are safe and appropriate for my machine. I can click OK. And you notice the software already uh, put the bore nose at the end of the selection here. As in, it knows the bore nose should be second and the quarter inch will be first. But if you wanted to change that order for whatever reason, you can do so. You can just click on a tool and click up and down. Uh, to move them to where you need them to be in, in whichever order you need them to be. Now I'm happy with the rest of these settings, so I'm just going to click on Calculate and we can have a look at these toolpaths. Now I'm going to run these one by one. So first I'm going to select the uh, pocket clear only, so you can see what the end mill is doing. So if I click on that, you'll notice it's cut all the way uh, through, so to the final uh, depth that we set, so 0.3. And then if we run the uh, half inch bore nose, you'll notice that cleans up the edges and you can see how simply uh, we created this chopping board. So quite a nice looking chopping board with really simple vectors and a fl fluting toolpath makes for some really efficient and good looking results. So now that we've covered some of the basics of the fluting toolpath, let's have a look at another example. So let's come up to file and close. So we're going to go up to open existing file and we're going to use this file here, which is the texture flute vectors file. And this is going to look at how we can create interesting textures using the um, fluting toolpath. Now you'll notice when I open up my worksheet, I've got a series of vectors on the worksheet that look like they're all single lines, but if you click on them, they're actually all individual lines. So we've got four on this particular row and we have three on this one. And you can notice that they're slightly offset from each other. So this line's up here, whereas one next over is slightly further down. And we've got a repeating pattern of four, three, four, three, four, three, and so forth. So let's have a look at how we can create some interesting texture panels with this because you could use this to potentially create um, a panel that you could hang up on a wall or a similar effect. So let's go over to our toolpath menu and we're going to go into our fluting toolpath and this time I've got a flute depth set of 0.25 and let's make sure all of our vectors are selected. So if we click on the worksheet and do control A on the keyboard, it selects all of our vectors. You can see all our start points are at the bottom of the vector here, so they're all in unison. These are my half inch bore nose. I'm going to ramp at the start and end of this toolpath with a ramp percentage of 25%. I want a smooth ramp type and we can go ahead and click calculate to generate our toolpath. And with it in our preview screen, let's click on preview selected toolpath. And you can see the interesting effect that takes place here by using the fluting toolpath. And you could also potentially add some color here to give it an interesting effect. In fact, if we look at the uh, toolpath color option and we change it to black, for example, you can see the interesting effect you may get with some paint or color added to it. So let's go back into the fluting toolpath and make some adjustments here. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to change the ramp to 100%. We're going to click on calculate and then we're going to reset our preview and then we're going to preview that selected toolpath. And you'll notice here by just changing a single value how much more of a drastically different uh, result that you can get. So you see the effect is uh, a different to what we just had a minute ago. And you'll see that you can create some really interesting looking effects relatively simply just by altering some values in uh, the form. But we're going to reset the view now and we're going to go back into the fluting toolpath. I'm going to look at using actually a different tool to achieve some different effects. So this time I'm going to have a flute depth of 0.35. And we're going to choose a V-bit in this case. So we're going to go to select. In this case, I'm using my uh, inch and a quarter uh, V-bit. So let's click select. And I'm going to ramp over the complete length, click calculate, and have a look at what this looks like. So if we now preview that selected toolpath, you can see we get this almost teardrop-like effect happening here with this effect. So it's quite an interesting effect that we're getting here uh, with this particular toolpath. And you can see how you can make some really interesting uh, designs simply by changing the tool or one of the settings uh, within the fluting toolpath. So you can see just how easy it is to do it. And if we double uh, click to go back into our uh, toolpath after resetting our preview, uh, we can look at changing some other settings as well. Uh, so for example, if we go to the tool and we make this one a OG tool, so a much larger tool, click select. And this time, we'll go for ramp, start, and end with 100%. We're going to keep it smooth, click on Calculate, and let's have a look at the effect that we get with this one. So you can see we get a really varied texture here uh, because of that larger tool and the shape that it has. Uh, you can see we get some really interesting texture effects. So you can see how this will make for some really interesting wall art or something similar.
and you'll notice when our preview finishes with that color effect you can see what it looks like if you were to paint it for example and you can see how that makes quite a striking uh, design. So I recommend that you experiment with the flicking toolpath and some of the variations you can make with it to make some really interesting designs for yourself. But with that we're going to look at our final example so let's come up to file and close and then we can look at our final example for this tutorial. So this time we're going to come up to open an existing file again and we're going to choose the seat flute vectors file. Now this file was created by one of our forum members, Bob Jr. Now what Bob Jr. has created here was a set of vectors that are straight and then radii around the semicircle uh, movement and then back down to straight to create a horseshoe shape. Now when applied with the fluting toolpath this will create a scooped seat arrangement. So let's have a look at that. So let's go to our toolpath menu and we're going to check our material setup and in this case uh, the thickness is 0.75, the XY datum is on the bottom left, the material surface for our Z0 position. Now my clearance here is 0.05 and it's that low because I want the rapid moves between each cut to be uh, as efficient as possible so I've just set it very low in this case because we've got a lot of lines that we're working here with so we just want to make sure that we're being really efficient with our machining uh, but these settings are safe and sound for my particular, particular setup so do double check these for yourself by running some tests and I'm going to click OK and then while on the worksheet we'll uh, do Control and A on the keyboard to highlight and select all of our vectors we'll go to the fluting toolpath and this time I want a flute depth of 0.3 and you'll notice this time I've actually got the end mill selected, the quarter inch end mill tool uh, for this one, uh, not the OG tool that we used last time. So make sure that you double check the tool here by using the quarter inch end mill. And I'm going to be ramping at the start and end with a ramp percentage of 100% with a smooth ramp type in this case. And we'll just call this one fluting and we'll click on calculate. So we can click on preview selected toolpath and you'll see uh, that the fluting toolpath. Uh, in combination with those range vectors makes for a seat shape so you can see how powerful that tool is uh, if you do some experimentation you can see here we've got a wonderful seat uh, now ready to go so you can make a chair potentially out of this or a stool uh, so we can get some really interesting effects with the fluting toolpath and really we're just demonstrating the possibilities of using the fluting toolpath in much more unusual ways uh, and we've seen users create bold shapes and other curved uh, shapes using the a similar method of using closely positioned straight line vectors and you can really do some interesting things for yourself so we highly encourage you to experiment with the flint toolpath and if you want to save this file we can come up to file or we can click on save as we can call this one seated fluid vectors finished because this is the finished file and we can come back to this later then to open it up or edit it for uh, use at a later time. But for now that concludes our tutorial on how to use a fluting toolpath and we hope you've enjoyed the video and we of course look forward to seeing you in the next one.